and welcome back to my channel. Um, this is the palatable packs for February. Now, as usual, I usually show you what I did for the previous month. However, I didn't do January's palatable packs. And the reason for it are two reasons. One, it was kind of a busy month. My husband had vacation time, so he dragged my hiney out of the house, and, <laughs> and we went um, sightseeing, more or less. We went to a couple of museums, and well, actually one museum. Well, actually, one is an outdoor museum, I suppose. Um, well, not really. It was a, it's a movie studio. And um, it was an old, uh, old Tucson. So he dragged my butt down there. Then he dragged me up to Lake Havasu. Then he dragged me over to the Science Museum. Then he dragged, dragged me to the Phoenix Zoo. Then he dragged me out to the World Wildlife Zoo. <sighs> so I, I, I didn't get around to doing it. And the, the second reason is I just couldn't figure out what to do. So, therefore, I did not get to the January's palatable back. I will though. I usually I'm if I miss miss a box for some reason, whether I it didn't get to it or I didn't I wasn't inspired or because sometimes you know you you just don't know what to draw. You know I mean I'll sit here and I'll doodle and stuff, but I don't want to do a doodle. Not 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 for one of these boxes. I don't want to do a doodle for a box. I want to do something, you know that's that's worthwhile. You know what I mean? I mean I I don't want to just do you know just you know half, I don't want to say the word, but the backside of a donkey, I, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't, I just don't want to do it, you know, a bad job of it, you know what I mean? Um, but anyway, so I didn't get to it, but I will get to it. But anyway, for now, let us get into the palatable packs for February. Now, I did break the seal, but I have not looked inside, so I have no clue what's in here. Oh, I can smell that. It smells like oil pastels. I can't see it. And it's fabric castell and it's oil pastels. <laughs> I can smell them. So this is pretty cool. I do have some oil pastel runners somewhere. I think they're um, Pentel. I think it's P Pentel. I think it's Pentel uh, oil pastels. But I don't have any fabric castell and I know it's a good company. But anyway, let's get but there's got a, it comes with a card, and oh look at that little cute cat. That is so cute. Oh, I should draw my cat. You, you would think that you know I've got cats I can draw. I've got photographs I can draw from, but sometimes it's like I don't feel like it, or it's usually it's just I I, I don't know what it is. I just I, I don't know what it is. I sometimes you just don't feel like it. You know, put taking on something major, and this stuff to me is a major project. It's it's something, you know, I really, when, when I get one of these boxes that have got pastels in it or oil paints or acrylic paint, I really want to do a good job. Anyway, let us see here. Um, it says here, first thing on the list here is the Fabri-Castell. Um, Fabri-Castell oil pastel set of 24. Um, let me see here. Um, Oil-based pastel crayons uh, offer wonderful opportunities of applying both extremely, both extremely intense, strong colors and delicate pastel uh, tones. Due to the high luminosity, the crayons are ideal uh, for encaustic, as well as encaustic. Is that how you pronounce that? Encaustic. I guess so. Encaustic. Encaustic as well as various pastel and scraping techniques. Hmm. Depending on the desired artistic effect, you can use your finger, uh, chamois, or blending stump to wipe them or uh, blend them with your brush or turpen turpenoid natural. So that's that. And let's, let's look inside the pretty little box. Now, I am not going, because these are oil pastels, I am not going to do swatches of these. But these are the colors. I don't want to hold it up too far. 
but these are the nice, these are pretty colors. So I'm not going to do swatches of these because there's 24 of them, and I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and do 20. I'm going to run out of time <laughs> if I do it that way. So that's why I'm not going to do. It. I will. I do swatch them though before I use them. So I know. Ooh, that's a strong. That is strong. That is some strong scent. Oops, I got this. What am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to get the lid back on. Oh, there, there we go. I like it in this nice little box. These will join my other oil pastels. <laughs> and then we've got the turpinoid. Instead of turpentine, we've got the turpinoid. Natural. So that's what this is. That's a, that's a good hefty bottle. Um, let me put it over here so you can look at it. Yeah, you can peruse it. Um, let's see. It says here... All if, uh, effective, uh, non-toxic, not tux, I can't talk. Um, non-toxic brush cleaner, gentle brush reconditioner, and medium turpinoid, turpinoid natural was designed for artists as a safer alternative to traditional and harmful solvents associated, associated with oil painting. AP uh, non-toxic, non-flammable, and with no harmful odors. Turpinoid Natural is safe for artists of all ages and will, will not irritate skin. It can be used as a medium to blend your pa oil pastels. So pretty cool, pretty cool. And then we have, according to this list, we've got a Sharpie white and black china markers. Now I know what a china marker is. I have one. I, I have one from my uh, with my charcoal. But these are the white and black china markers. And I know these things write on anything. Now, let's see, what does it say here? It says, um, a soft crayon-like pencil-style marker designed to mark on both porous and non-porous surfaces. It can be used with your oil pastels or independently on a variety of surfaces such as glass, metal, or ceramics. Uh, what's more, there's no sharpening required. Just peel away the, the uh, tear string to reveal more marker. So now I never had a china. Um, you know, I never had a white one. I've always I've had, but I do have a, a black one. And then we have ah, this is the next thing that was mentioned was this brush. Uh, let me see here. It says Princeton Snap Brussel, uh, Bristle Brush. Uh, I yeah, I'll ideal. Why can't I talk today? Ideal for <laughs> oil and acrylic. These long-handled uh, brushes feature natural bristles secured to a um, wooden handle with what? With nickel, ferrules, ferrules, ferrules. I don't know how to pronounce this. It's spelled F-E-R-R-U-L-E-S. I do not know that word. <laughs> I do not know that word. Um, use the brush with your turpinoid natural to blend your oil pastels. And then we have, put that aside. Ah, here we are. This is the next on the mint list. It's a, obviously, it's a pad. Um, it is a Strathmore Mixed Media Pad 6 by 8 inches. Uh, these pads feature uh, uh, papers that combine true wet media performance and dry media finish that is suitable for a range of mixed media applications. Ooh, another mixed media. I love these mixed media um, things. I mean, I've got so many of them now, but I discovered them after I, um, after I got my first art box. I, I decided I wanted to get paper that I could do, um, you know, anything with, you know, oil painting or, or um, acrylic or watercolor or marker or, you know, whatever. So anyway, so that'd be cool. That's just another one to add to my arsenal. And then we have Tombow Mono Drawing Pencil. Mono pencils are made with superior, extra refined, high quality graphite. These long lasting pencils feature strong uh, points, making them extremely break resistant. Let me see where it's up. Oh, here it is. Here it is. And it's not sharpened. Well, that's a bummer. I expect sharpened. <laughs> I expect sharpened before before I uh I don't want to have to I don't want to have to sharpen this myself. That's too much effort. 
I'm just kidding. And this is a, I think it's a, what is it? It looks like a 2B. No, it's a 2H. Wait, 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 hold on. It's gold, so the, the light's reflecting on it. Oh, it's a 2B. It's 2B or not 2B? That is the question. And then, uh, let me see here. We've got blending tools. Oh, a chamois or chamois? Chamois. Chamois. Well, anyway. It's uh, 5 by 7 inches. It's a natural, soft, uh, pliable, and highly absorbent. It's ideal deal for blending pastels. Now, I actually, when I was in college, I bought one of these things, and I used to, I used it for, and I actually need another one because my other chamois was just, I used it so much with my charcoal that it was just grody and everything. I did wash it, but it just, it wasn't the same. So that's good. I need another one of these. And let me see here. And then we have blending stumps. Excellent for blending and smoothing pastels. Yes, I know. And we've got long blend of blending stumps. And these are by Arteza, I think. Yes, these are Arteza. And this one was by Arteza, too. And they don't give a price on... Uh, none of the, these never give a... Uh, this, uh, the powerful packs never give a price on any of this stuff. But anyway, that is the... I will, you know, guys, I will try... <sighs> to come up with something, you know, for, for this box and the last box and any other boxes that I've missed, you know, that I did not do the projects. Um, it's just, I don't know, sometimes it's just like, I don't know what to draw. I want to do something really nice. And I, I don't know, I, 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 I could not give you a really good answer why I did not do anything for, um, January's box because it wasn't that hard. It was just, I just, I, I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do for it. Anyway, that is January's powerful pack. I mean, February's powerful packs. I hope I can come up with something to do um, for this one with the oil pastels. Um, I good because goodness knows I've got so many photographs to work from. Photographs from Hawaii. I've got photographs. I just took some photographs at the Science Museum. They have a exhibit. Um, the Arizona Science Museum has got an exhibit that is um, features uh, artifacts from Pompeii as well as the you know the uh, plaster casts of the people who perished. And I took loads of pictures from. Um, the, I mean, I think I took a photograph of every single thing in the exhibit, from the, from Apollo who greeted us when we came in the door, to the la I think to the crouching man, who was the pla of a, it was a plaster cast of a crouching man um, that was taken you know from Pompeii. So and let me tell you, I have waited almost all my life to see that exhibit. I mean, I always wanted to go to Pompeii. I don't know why. I'm not a morbid type of person. But volcanoes fascinate me. And to think that Pompeii was virtually frozen in time where n nothing was destroyed. It was just covered in ash. And the people were... And I, I think the hardest thing for me when I went to the exhibit, because they had it in two sections. The first section was everything was perfectly pristine. And, you know, it was like new. It was like... It, it just came out of, you know, wherever they bought it from, you know what I mean? And, you know, you, it was like life before the, the eruption. And then you go into this little room and the floor trembles and then you get the smell of um, uh, a sulfur, you know, from, from the volcano and stuff. And then, you know, it kind of gets really chilly. You know, they, they, they give you, they simulate a volcanic eruption and, and the uh, pyroclastic flow coming down. And then you go into the next section, and it was the second section that I had a hard time with. Because when I saw all those plaster casts, I told my husband, I said, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this exhibit or the rest of the exhibit. Um, because these were images of people who were trying to get away, uh, especially there was this one that really broke my heart. It was a little boy, and he was, his mother was, you know, on the ground, and he was standing up try, as if he was trying to get away, and he was frozen, 
And that's, it was just like that. I can't even imagine. And there was, there was a man, the crouching man, he had his, like, his tunic over, you know, over his mouth and nose, and he had no, he had no chance. And there was a dog, I think the one that really bothered me was the dog, the do because the dog had been chained up, and he had no way of getting away. He couldn't have gotten away anyway, but he was contorted, you know, like, as if he was, oh, it was a hard exhibit. I'm already getting misty-eyed and, and emotional about it because it was really hard to get to think about all these people who lost their lives. I mean, I didn't know anybody. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't around in 79 AD, but it, it was just the, the thought of these people. You know, they had, had ignored... The, the tremblings, of course, they didn't understand, and Vesuvius had not erupted, I guess, for a long, 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 long time, and they probably, you know, I think 10 years prior, they had gotten earthquakes, but they didn't, and he, and Vesuvius rumbled and everything, but, but, um, you know, they didn't, you know, think anything of it, and so when it did erupt in the pyroclastic flow, you can't outrun that thing. Um, you, you just can't. There's no way you can out, it was moving, so, I mean, lava, you can outrun lava. Because, I mean, if you think about it, I want to move to Hawaii, and where we're going, on the big island, the little town we want to move to is near the volcano. <laughs> but Kilauea erupts all the time. I mean, it's constantly erupting. It's not like, it would, it would be like Mauna Kea, which is another volcano there, but it's dormant. If, it, it would be like if that erupted that would be, it would probably have a pyroclastic flow because it has not erupted in a very, very long time. Uh, Mount St. Helens is a good a good example. Um, and there was one, I think, over in the Philippines or something, and a couple of scientists um, got caught in the pyroclastic flow and lost their lives. And I'm like, well, duh, why did you, you know, you should have known you can't outrun it. But anyway, so... I just felt so bad for all these, you know, all these people. And, of course, the people in Her Herculaneum who also lost their lives. But this is mainly uh, Pompeii. And, I mean, it was a wonderful exhibit because I'm never, as far as I'm aware, I'm never going to get to Italy to see Pompeii in person. I always wanted to go there I, since I first learned about, you know, in school, about Pompeii and Vesuvius. And, like I said, volcanoes have fascinated me for as long as I can remember. As when I first heard about a volcano, it fascinated me. And, um, I, and I, no, I don't want to get close to one. I mean, I don't want to be, you know, like on the lip of one or anything like that. But I just, just I don't know what it is about the volcanoes that, that fascinate me. So, and, and like I said, lava you can outrun. Because the, um, in Hawaii, the, the lava moves really, really slow. I mean, literally, it moves really, it's, I, it, like I think, I think it's called pohoho, or well. Anyway, it makes pillow lava, and it just it does move really slow. So in other words, you know, you can sit there and it, it'll creep along. You know, it's not gonna. You, know, you can move back. You know, like say if it's creeping towards you, you can move back a couple steps and it creeps towards you. You can move. Around. It's not gonna. You know, you know, over. You know, overtake you. But a pyroclastic flow, you have no chance. So, and that's what happened with the people of Pompeii. They had no chance, and it just was fascinating to see. Everything kept just just as pristine as if it was, you know, they bought it yesterday, you know. And I, I remember, you know, reading about when they discovered Pompeii and everything was just as if the people just got up and left. And then, of course, them finding the cavities, the, the, um, the uh, what do you call it, the hollow cavities where the people had disintegrated and left their images. And that, it was just, I made it through the exhibit. You know, I, I did get a little misty-eyed. I did. I got choked up. You know, thinking about you know, especially the children, the children, and you know. But but the same. You know, you, I can't fault the adults. If they could have got away, they would have got away. You know, they probably just thought, well, you know, the this will you know blow over and I'll be able to walk out. But no, they they all suffocated to death. That's exactly what happened. they suffocated from the ash and everything. And well, anyway, but it was a good exhibit, and I'm glad my husband dragged me there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm because I'm like you know, honey, but, but well, actually, 
with that one, with that one, I actually wanted to go because I told my husband when he was because I thought he was going to take me like in my birth birth month, which is March. I figured he was going to take me then, but he had rented a car, which was a really nice Jeep. Oh, it was a nice Jeep. But anyway, I fell in love with the Jeep. <laughs> but um, so that one I actually wanted to go to. And so he surprised me by saying, we're going to go to the museum. I'm like, what? <laughs> Yay. So that was exciting. The other places, I was like, I don't want to go. I think the first place, oh, the aquarium. That was the other, Sea Odyssey. Or Odyssey. That was the one that um, he took me to, too, was the aquarium over in Scottsdale. And I'd already been there once, but he had never been there. So, And I was wanted to see the dolphins, but unfortunately we missed the performance. I think we were like 15 minutes late, so... Because they only have two performances a day. And the one that we were going to go to was at 3 o'clock. But we missed it by 15 minutes. So anyway, that is, um, that is, I'm, I'm done rambling. <laughs> if you hung out until I finished, bless you. <laughs> bless you. But I will try to come up with something for palatful packs um, for February. Maybe, maybe you know what, since it's, since it's February and it's Valentine's, Maybe I'll try to come up with something that's like Valentine related. I'll try it because I'm always thinking about something that's Valentine. So I will try to come up with something that's Valentine related. Anyway, or or since March is coming up, maybe something for St. Patrick's Day, which, by the way, is my birthday. Which means that one of these days I've got to go to Ireland so that everybody in the country can celebrate my birthday with me. <laughs> Anyway, that's what I want to do. I don't know how close is, if I'm ever going to get close enough to go to Ireland, but I would like to just to celebrate my birthday on on uh, March 17th with everybody else in the country. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this uh, unboxing, and um, I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having a wonderful day. Y'all take care of yourselves. Be good to each other. Till next time, God bless. Bye.